want to stand back there, we could shoot um, like rifle at the plate rack from mm -hmm. back there. We just can't do it really close. I am the second oldest of seven siblings, uh, five girls, two boys. And so I was one of the older ones, so I was always kind of the tomboy and I would go with my dad to shooting matches. We all went deer hunting. S unload it, sling it. Mm -hmm. And then we were saying, we were like, if you want to add something fun, we could flip the tire. Started shooting, you know, competitively over, over 30 years ago. And then that just kind of morphed into going to college and uh, meeting Becky on the rifle team there and just Kind of that's our story ever since. Rifle. We'll be the can you come up on the to front here? Now. Hey Tim, what about this paper on this side? Sure. So we, I mean uh, my earliest shooting memory. It is probably shooting BB guns in the garage back in um, I think what 2005, 2006. Oh, and they um, have and a if these are brand new, I'm gonna That's what steal these. Here. These lovely glasses, like these are mine. I have two pair. I know where they are. It's pretty simple. They're my glasses. There are five of us. But um, everybody seems to ask me where their glasses are, and I'm like, I know where mine are. I wanna say I was about three or four years old. I remember shooting with my grandpa. I, I think it was a 1911. I was so young, I honestly couldn't remember, but he was kind of like standing over me, helping me hold it up, pointing at the target. And I honestly don't even remember if I hit it or not. <laughs> my earliest shooting memory, I think would be, uh, it was like a 22 cricket out with my, my mom or my dad, I can't really remember which one, but out in the backyard. Terry ID. And then I saved the kids, like we saved all the things from our military IDs. Every time we'd get an ID, we'd go into the deer's office and they'd be like, you wanna do what? And I'm like, I don't wanna keep the ID, I just wanna cut out the picture. Shooting has affected other aspects of my life in discipline and how I carry myself, um, competing at high level competitions, you know, really making sure that I'm doing everything I can to stay humble. One, two, three, plates. You don't want to do like drop reverse, what? You don't want to do like reverse kneel or something. You there? could. I mean, we could, could do different kind of we could do reverse kneel. Big family, kids shooting, hunting outdoors, all that stuff. Yeah. We've got mags. We have bodies. Three gun is the thing that we m most focus on because we enjoy all of them. Um, if I had to pick a platform, I'd say it's the one I'm shooting at that moment. Get her ready. Stand by. It has certainly shown me, especially with blacksmithing and other trades, uh, the ability or the need to properly commit yourself. And it's okay to kind of falter, but it's also not okay to just stay the exact same for an extended period of time. I think shooting, you know, the competition side it definitely helps with, you know, managing pressure and stress. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, a couple of times we made some, some long trips out west and we did camping and saw a bunch of the national parks while hitting like the MGM Junior Camp with the kids and that was probably some of my best memories of just the kids were at a fun age, we got to see a lot of neat things and then still do, do some shooting as well.
getting to see deserts and cacti and stuff like that for the first time it was very fun memory. I, I definitely enjoy hunting you know on our property because you hear people tell stories about oh you know waking up at 4 a.m. to drive to public land or you know can't put up a stand or everything's here it's right out your back door. And... I really enjoy that aspect where we're not like, well, the kids watch me bowl and then I watch them play baseball and then somebody else is playing soccer and everybody's doing kind of their own thing. It really makes it a lot easier, honestly, to have everybody doing something if we're all doing the same thing. You have such a bond, especially if you're able to put up with each other uh, for a 20 hour car ride. It's something that I wouldn't trade for the world. Fire. Oh, shit. But we have, I mean, days of travel with our kids and we've spent so much time as a family, so much time where we talk and we talk about like silly trivial things, but we talk about some really big, deep, important things. And I think it's really great as a family to spend time. Gosh. Yeah, that really obliterated it. For like 10 seconds afterwards. I'm bringing it over. Let's see. Bring it, no, 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 no. Gathered. Got another wheel. Like oh, some yeah. of this ice is actually like. Ice, you got like crushed ice now. It's, it's breaking up in layers. Everybody sharing it is kind of, it is a struggle. There's so many people, so much gear, you know, a lot of stuff in the car, a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff to manage, but I don't know. We've all kind of got into it and liked it and it's kind of stuck and I think it works well. It's very helpful to be able to have five different people to look at a stage, notice little details, notice you know, shortcuts we might be able to take, uh, as well as having four other people that are far enough behind in the shooting order that if you forget something or if you need something quickly, you could have them kind of help you out and you're not uh, trying to fumble loading a mag as you're walking up to the, sta uh, the starting line. Um, who is the most competitive? I think it, it depends on the type of match. Um, if I say who wants to be the most prepared, it would be my mom. If we went off of who purely wants to be, you know, be competitive within the family, it would probably be me. I guess if I had to sum up each of our roles, um, my dad's obviously the father figure of the family and, you know, really, really works hard. Um, we're incredibly thankful for it. I, I'm very competitive, but then knowing that I you know, have to have my job be in the priority and have to pay the bills and have to do this and do that, I, you know, that kind of falls into the background a little bit. But normally, you know, I've always been driven by competing. My mom is really good at getting prepared for things, taking care of a lot of the paperwork. Uh, our mom definitely helps as far as setting up matches, uh, signing us up, and handling all the social media stuff. That's mostly her. Do you see me doing that? Yeah. <laughs> Pro tip from the north. When you need to use your phone and your gloves won't work, swipe up. <laughs> I mostly do a lot of the reloading, getting guns set up. I've kind of jokingly been calling myself the quartermaster recently. Tim? is very accomplished and he's very focused um, to the point like we joke that he's a little OCD about things. We were walking a stage for a match once and Sean and Tim were in front of us like you had to shoot all this pistol inside this barn and then you had to go outside and grab your shotgun and and there was a point where you like shoot some slugs, shoot some birdshot and Sean and I are walking it and Tim comes up he's like no your foot needs to go right here and it was like a difference of like from here to here, but you could see something and it presented better. Sean really is able to bring a relaxed attitude to things. So on the competitive side, Sean is our sort of like wild card. He does a lot of like miraculous, like make it happen kind of stuff. Um, so I think it shows too that 
we'll get into this like minutia of what is the proper grip stance and trigger control for pistol or this or that. And sometimes you're like, no, sometimes it's about tenacity. And Sean's got that in spades. And Andrew is, um, Andrew's being the youngest, he, he brings his own, um, own personality to, to things. Andrew certainly does enough work on cars to say that he contributes. You know, being proficient with a weapon, um, it's something that you can't just pick up in a day and learn. It's, it's a, a lifestyle in a sense. I think that's what makes shooting so unique as a sport, is that you can just mix all these, you know, you know, men, women, kids, uh, boys, girls, whatever, you can mix everybody together and just everybody just goes out and has fun. You're both kind of cheering each other on, but also competing against each other. So shooting sports, there's like upwards of 60 million people that participate in shooting sports, like across the whole realm of things. And that's more than camping, more than golfing. And so you think about all the people who are like, oh, I'm going golfing this weekend, I'm going camping, my family and I are doing this. But there's more people that shoot and do these things. We just don't hear about it so much. So I love the fact that we can share that with people.